Welcome to Beyond the Horizon podcast, a show all about the Horizon ecosystem and the exciting world of blockchain and Web3. Join us as we explore the latest happenings in this rapidly evolving space and discover new horizons together. Now let's go Beyond the Horizon. Hey everyone, welcome back to Beyond the Horizon. In today's podcast, we're going to be discussing growing out the Horizon developer community, as well as growth in the ecosystem and community itself around Beyond. We'll be bringing on Spencer, Ben, and Angie to discuss the great new developments as well as what they're working on, which is super exciting. Uh, before that, we'll be going into our monthly updates, including two new co-authored papers by Horizon Labs cryptographer, Marcus. We'll go ahead and bring on those monthly updates now. This month, we've been releasing quite a few pieces of new documentation around launching your own dApps and tokens on EON, which is currently in Yuma Testnet. You can find all of these documentation pieces as well as tutorials either by the EON website itself or by going to our YouTube channel to view the current walkers. The tutorials also have a high focus on utilizing Third Web, which simplifies launching your smart contract with their one-click deploy smart contract option. We highly recommend that you check them out and let us know what you all think. We've also recently released Zen version 3.3.0, which is a Zen security upgrade, as well as Zen 3.3.1, which further uh, extends the deprecation height of the previous version. We're also super excited to announce that Horizon Labs cryptographer Marcus has co-authored two new papers focusing on certain specializations within the zero knowledge space. Now we'll go ahead and move on to our interview. Hi everyone, welcome to episode three of Beyond the Horizon. Today, we're welcoming on three special guests from Horizon Labs that we're all very excited to talk to. We're gonna be discussing the launch of our new EVM compatible side chain called Eon and kind of talking more about how we're growing out the community as well as a full developer ecosystem. So today I am super excited to welcome on Spencer, Ben, and Angie from the Horizon Labs teams. And I'm gonna go ahead and let them introduce themselves to you. Let's go ahead and start with Spencer. Sure, uh, thanks. So I'm Spencer Soloway, the VP of Marketing at Horizon Labs. Um, on that side, I have a background you know, in both performance marketing, uh, building communities, building user bases, as well as in product marketing. Before I came to Horizon, I ran a marketing agency of my own for about eight years. Prior to that, my background is really working in what I would call early adoption tech uh, markets. So I worked in 3D printing for a long time. I worked in STEM tech in the education world uh, as well. And, you know, here I am and I've joined Horizon. And I guess that I did that about a year ago at this point on the Horizon Lab side. I came in originally as a director of product marketing. Uh, currently, as I had mentioned before, I'm now the vice president of marketing over on this side, and I'm leading a lot of the Eon go to market efforts, as well as the functions of kind of how we bring in more people into the Horizon ecosystem and getting them to stay here as well. And that's true both obviously on the user side and the developer side. Great. Uh, ben, how about yourself? Yeah, Erica, uh, thanks for putting this together. My name is Ben Sherman. I've been with Horizon Labs now for about eight months. Uh, I'm a marketing manager here, assisting with the go-to-market for the Eon launch. Currently focusing, um, currently focusing on putting together our grant programs and our hackathons that will be Currently focusing on putting together our grant programs and our hackathons that we'll be launching with Mainnet um, with the idea that we're able to bring in some new developers and provide some uh, activity for those currently here. <clears throat> Very excited and I'm really looking forward to digging into that with you in a few minutes. Let's go ahead and introduce somebody I'll probably know, but I'll allow her to reintroduce herself. This is Angie. Go ahead. Yes, thanks. Um, <clears throat> oh, wow. <laughs> I'm going to have to take that out. 
<laughs> yes, um, thank you so much, Erica. And hello, everybody. So I'm um, Angie. Um, it's wow, it's been a while since the last time that I was taking some some uh, just like uh, calls and like uh, engaging with our community. I uh, just have to say that I missed uh, I miss you guys. So I'm um, happy to be here today. Uh, for those of you who maybe not know me, I've been in the, kind of like in the background um, or in the back door for a long time on the management side. Um, I, I'm one of the project managers at Horizon Labs. And previously, I was on the business development team back in the early days of Horizon in Horizon Labs. So I'm super happy to be here today and just to be talking about this very, very exciting uh, uh, project that we have going on. So thank you for, for having us. Well, it's great to have all three of you. And I can say with 100% certainty, Angie, we definitely miss having you on BD um, and miss you in the community. So I'm glad that we were able to bring you on here today. Okay, so today we do have quite a few questions that came in from our community regarding the growth of Eon's ecosystem as well as the developer community. Uh, but today we're going to focus on primarily growing out that developer community as well as the Horizon community as a whole. Uh, so let's go ahead. We'll start with our first question. Um, so this is a very exciting time for Horizon and Horizon Labs. Can you tell us more about how your positions at Horizon Labs play into the Horizon Ecosystem Vision 2.0? Uh, let's go ahead. We'll start with uh, Spencer, if that's okay. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, I've been doing quite a bit on that side. One large portion of it is building stronger connections between Horizon Labs and Horizon, particularly in terms of making sure that what we're doing on our side and what Lucy, whom I know a lot of you obviously know, has been doing on her side and making sure that we're just a bit better aligned and closer and moving in the same direction, you know, than we have been in the past. And I think it's really important that we do that because ultimately our mission at Horizon Labs is to grow the ecosystem and to give people reasons to go forward and use it. Um, and it's to evangelize it really in a lot of ways. And I'm excited personally, and I know that we're excited as a company to be doing that. So that's one part of it. The other part is really doing a lot of thinking through how we can best integrate things into Eon. And, you know, Erica, obviously, I've been working quite a bit with you on that as well, making sure that we have the right developer tools in there, making sure that we have the right infrastructure uh, there and that it can really become the best ecosystem that it can be. And also, you know, how do we create feedback loops between the community and Horizon, between potential and Horizon Labs and between potential enterprise clients and Horizon Labs? How do we make this the best ecosystem really for the broadest number of people? Fantastic. Uh, ben, how about you? Yeah, Spencer didn't really leave me with a whole lot here. Um, <laughs> but yeah, just to speak to what he's saying, um, at Horizon Labs, we certainly want this to be a really successful launch. Um, and with the idea that we we're trying to leverage our team at Horizon Labs and the team at Horizon as best as we can to make sure that when this goes live, it's a success. Um, a lot of partnerships are being put together right now. Um, some you've heard about, some you haven't heard about yet, and we're super excited to announce those. Um, but yeah, we're hoping that once we hit Maynet, we're ready to go, and it's not going to be it's not going to be a slow build of sorts. Exciting. And Angie, how does project management fit into all of this? Oh man, um, I would say pretty much uh, in all parts of, uh, you know, the work that everybody does every day in the sense that I think for me, project management is all about executing. Like if I can summarize my job in, in a couple of words would be make it happen. And um, how do we do that? Of course, we have to bring uh, teams together. We have to communicate. We have to ask questions and and really, really kind of like shape it and give it form so that we can uh, be able to deliver and complete any of the activities and everything that happens, uh, let's say backstage, to um, have uh, the team 
the technology that we have right now. Uh, maybe a little bit of a background is I've I've have I have five pretty much six years um, being part of this team, and it really goes beyond just like oh let's try to build something and and just release it out there. It's like it, it's like really. Um, way more than that in the sense that how do you do a team? Uh, how do you put a team together? How do you basically try to to create a, um, a blockchain, a company, a functioning uh, ecosystem? Um, and there's people and there's a lot of things happening in the, in the back uh, stage. So uh, to me, I think project management is, is about supporting uh, a lot of the activities that happen and making sure that everybody is able to do their work uh, so that we can have uh, uh, projects and certainly uh, things as exciting as uh, E.ON and our EVM launch happening really, really soon. That makes complete sense. Uh, I can say that it's definitely probably like hurting a bunch of cats at times. So we greatly appreciate you stepping in to make sure that everyone is able to execute on things that they need to in order to make sure this launch is as successful as possible. So let's get into some of our more ecosystem-based questions, uh, starting with, do you think there are any differentiators within the Horizon ecosystem or beyond that you think that developers would particularly benefit from? Uh, yeah, you know, I, I, I do. I think that at the end of the day, when you talk about an EVM, an EVM is an EVM, right? It's a runtime environment. It's not all that different from like a Linux, for example. And, you know, where the differentiators really lie are where the EVM is built on. And, you know, for us, that means that it's built on Horizon and that it benefits from all the things that Horizon gives to it. Um, you know, for example, our EVM, it's a side chain, right? It can be replicated. There can be other EVM side chains. It benefits from Zendu. It benefits from side chain to side chain communication. And it inherits security to a degree, right, of Horizon in the main chain as well. And that's all really exciting. So, you know, really that's kind of the differentiator at the end of the day that this is not just an EVM, but it's an EVM that's built on Horizon. And, you know, beyond that, I think that a lot of the differentiators are going to come from what we build on it, right? So there are a lot of EVMs in the world and a lot of them essentially are kind of what I would call sort of like empty computers right, where there's not necessarily a lot that you can do besides kind of start it up and look at it. Uh, there may be 10, maybe 12 or so EVMs that have really active functional ecosystems in places where you can really build a lot, interact a lot. There's a lot to do for users, a lot to do for builders. And, you know, they have these really vibrant, wonderful ecosystems. And our goal is really to grow to that kind of place. Um, and, you know, as we kind of try to get towards that type of point, a lot of the different traders are going to be in the scale and breadth of developer tools that we bring on board on the ways in which we add methods and tools and use cases for people to, to interact with the chain, you know, as well as, you know, kind of the different ways that you can build on there um, as, as a builder. And then I think that another part of it is having a really strong social layer. You know, ultimately, when you have something decentralized, it's still about the people who are interacting with it, making sure that we're doing everything that we can to build and support the community, um, to kind of build around an ethos and, you know, a code of ethics of sorts that really helps us kind of craft a place forward and get to where we want to be. And that ultimately will all be the differentiator. That's really intriguing. Um, and I know that the community and myself would love to learn a little bit more about those development programs that you mentioned that Ben was working on. Ben, is that something that you could share a little bit more with us about? Yeah, definitely. Um, so we're going to have a few different um, grant programs there. One of those programs is going to be more focused on protocols um, and those larger protocols that we're working now to bring on board. Because again, we want to launch um, with a pretty vibrant ecosystem. Those protocol grants, there's going to be an application process for that. Um, there's going to be a pool of Zen set aside um, to attract those protocols. And with that, 
we're going to offer a lot of social co-promotion with those. So you'll be seeing some of those campaigns running in the near future. Um, in addition, when we bring on those protocols, we're going to make sure that our community is well educated on what they are and how they can interact with them. With that, we'll be putting together tutorials, webinars, and documentations based around those protocols. Um, you'll see a lot of PR releases going out. And in addition, you could even see them on an up and coming Beyond the Horizon episode. Um, so that's very focused on our protocol grants. In addition, we do have developer grants, and these are more for our community developers, the ones we currently have and those that we're looking to onboard. We will have a pool of funds set aside for those. There will be an application process as well for that. And in addition to that, since we are pretty focused on the security of our users, we want to make sure we can offer some incentives for those types of uh, developer grants. So we'll have a bug bounty fund set aside. We'll be partnering with a pretty well-established bug bounty community. We can't announce that right now, but we will hopefully be announcing that soon. And so with that, not only will you receive um, the grant funds from us, but you'll also be able to set up a bug bounty for your project um, and we'll fund that bug bounty for you. In addition, we do want to help you uh, grow your community. So we will be also offering some social crowd promotion with that. Um, those will involve some Twitter spaces, some AMAs. You'll get some shout outs in our newsletter. Um, in addition, we are looking into possibly providing some marketing launch guides as well. In addition to those grant programs, we are also putting together uh, a hackathon calendar. We are partnering with the premier like hackathon platform in Web3. Again, unfortunately, can't announce that right now, but we'll hopefully be doing that soon. Um, and with that, we have funds set aside um, to offer through those hackathons. Those hackathons will be very focused on protocols that we want to see built out within our ecosystem, but we'll also have some open-ended ones so people can come to us with ideas for those. There will be co-sponsors um, with a lot of those hackathons, so it won't strictly be uh, protocols that we're looking for built out. Maybe it's, pro maybe it's items that protocols we're partnered with are looking to have built out as well. So you'll see some co-sponsors with those. Um, but yeah, we're currently putting together that event schedule and as soon as that is set, we'll announce that. Most of those will be remote, um, but we are looking into the possibility of having some of those uh, held at some upcoming crypto conferences types of events. Wow, I'm not gonna lie. I'm super excited for all of that. And a lot of that was actually even new to me. So thank you so much for covering that, Ben. Um, in addition to all of the things that you just mentioned, is there other ways that you're looking to kind of grow and nurture the developer community that's coming into these? Yeah, for sure. So we're definitely looking to put together programs, whether it be um, tutorials or webinars to involve the community more. We're going to have, again, a lot of documentation for more of the experienced developers, but we're also onboarding a lot of different platforms that can help maybe like the hobbyist type of a developer um, launch their own smart contracts, launch their own NFT collections, lots of their own ERC-20 tokens. So we're, we'll be building programs around that to keep the community more informed. Um, and then we'll certainly have campaigns. And that's where you'll see a lot of those co-sponsored type of campaigns with some of these protocols that we're bringing in. Um, not only do these protocols that we are partnering with offer solutions that we're looking for, but they also offer a really quick way to expand and grow our community, which we're super excited about. And um, Erica, if I may add to that one as well. So actually I, uh, would like to speak a little bit about documentation, but I think we can kind of like take a step back because I really like the question you asked to Spencer, like differentiators um, uh, within their horizon ecosystem uh, with Eon. So I think it's really important to like really think about how we are like leveraging our technology 
uh, we have the Horizon main chain, we have our side chains, and Eon is just one of our side chains. It's our EVM uh, compatible sidechain protocol, which is going to enable and open up a whole bunch of different use cases and tools and infrastructure for developers. So I think it kind of like goes even beyond uh, something that we, uh, how can I say, uh, we're trying to enable. And, and I think it's really kind of like a white canvas, let's say, for developers to say, hey, here is the infrastructure, here is, you know, a secure platform that you can trust, that you can build on top of, uh, right? Certainly we've been around for some years now. We are uh, OGs in this crypto blockchain industry. And I think that also from a developer perspective, it's like, hey, not only you're developing or trying to build, you know, a decentralized application in top of a, of a network that's just maybe one day just going to go away and, and fade away, right? It's like you can also trust the system in which you're building on top. Um, certainly a lot of the exciting things that Ben mentioning are, are very, very important to support this effort. And documentation, for example, is one of them that we are um, really to, pa uh, to pay close attention to as to like, what are these tools and information and how we can better structure the information uh, for our developers to interact with the system. Uh, I have to say that it's an effort that a lot of our team members are really paying close attention to because it's it's uh, it's what enables uh, to us as a company, as a team, as a platform to speak with our developers, right? Like, hey, this is the way you can interact with our system. Here are the steps to follow. And, and that's uh, uh, one of the, let's say, main focuses that we have uh, right now uh, working towards. So... Uh, Documentation is something uh, really, really essential uh, for us and uh, a key component on the success for, for Eon. Yeah, that all makes so much sense. And thank you so much for taking that step back to kind of discuss how you feel all of this um, plays into the greater ecosystem and differentiators. Uh, so we've been talking so much about developers. Is there a specific type of developer that you think would really thrive within this ecosystem? Yeah, so, you know, I think our goal is really for it to be an ecosystem for every and any type of developer, right? You know, we want everybody to be able to thrive in the ecosystem at the end of the day, whether they're a hobbyist or an enterprise production grade developer or somewhere in between. We want to make sure that it's a comfortable and productive place for all of those people. You know, building for web three is obviously very important and we want to attract those folks we want to be able to attract hobbyists who uh, you know are new to it people who are coming in for the first time and learning how to code for example or who have coded in other languages uh, we want to make sure that the sdks are there uh, that you know if you're coming from a javascript background or from another background that you can interact with you know the chain and that's really important we want to make sure that the SDKs and the IDs are there and that there are as many tools as people can use um, where they're comfortable. You know, I, I think that ultimately, you know, whether you need one thing or another thing in particular, we want to provide it to you. You know, so things like our partnership with Third Web, for example, is really important. And that kind of brings us into the sort of low code, no code movement as well. So even if you don't really know how to code or you're just learning or if you are an experienced coder and you don't want to necessarily build part of what you're doing in scratch by scratch right there are places for you to go and to grab some of that and you know to kind of accelerate your processes and i think that if we've done our job at the end of the day really every developer should be able to thrive in our ecosystem it's really exciting and definitely reaches a lot of the different corners of the Horizon community. Since we do have such a large community base, it really has a lot of different people in different levels or skill levels within it. So I love that there's a huge focus on making sure that everybody is welcome into the ecosystem and able to develop. Which also kind of brings me to uh, a bit of a step back on the documentation. Um, since we have so many different levels of developers within the ecosystem itself and coming in, is there a way that our developers can, or community members can request specific types of documentation? 
Sure, sure. Um, so, yes, um, the answer is yes. Um, I think we um, are always trying to like welcoming um, uh, developers, people, community to give us feedback um, uh, through that, whether that's like through social media channels, through Discord, and like really like uh, we we really really have an uh, amazing uh, community that always likes to provide us feedback. So yes, there's there's way to request. Um, documentation improvements. Um, so yeah, I would I would say that uh, the doors are open, and, and uh, either whether that's like via email or the website, uh, there's like contact forms, uh, feedback forms to social media, Twitter, Discord. Um, always, always welcome. Great. Yeah, and so you know, I think first of all, to Angie's point, this is the first EVM on Horizon, but it likely will not be the last EVM on Horizon, the ability to have other side chains and side chains to communicate with each other is going to open up a ton of opportunities for folks out there. And I would also say it's not just what folks want documentation on, but what foreigners they want in it, right? People learn differently. And, you know, certainly if it's something that folks are struggling with, if there's something in particular, we want to be able to provide that, but we also want to be able to provide information as how-tos, as tutorials, as higher level discussions, and provide the technical documentation that people need as well. Um, and, you know, overall, that is something that we're also thinking about here, right? How can we be more responsive to the documentation needs of the community? That's fantastic. And of course, everyone is always welcome into our Discord. So if you do have specific feedback that you want to provide to us or you want to see something to help you build on the ecosystem, just let us know. We're always happy to get that feedback from you all. Okay, so we just have one last question, and this one is for all three of you. Uh, what are you most excited about for Horizon's future? We'll go ahead and start with Spencer. Yeah, so, you know, really, it's sort of everybody. It's everybody who's listening to this. It's the community and the different ways that they're going to interact with the chain in ways that they never could before. It's going to be what's built on there. You know, we don't really know yet, for example, what the most successful DAP is going to be necessarily, right? We don't know, uh, you know, where that's going to come from. And just being able to see where that happens and what people build and how we can support them, that's really what excites me. Yeah, and I'll, I'll hop in. I've only been with the company for eight months um, and knowing where we're going to be a month or two from now um, compared to when I came on, it's, it's pretty awesome. It's pretty eye-opening. I feel like having this EVM compatible side chain, having the ability to launch these it's like we're we're able to communicate with the rest. We're able to communicate with the rest of the Web three space now, um, and that's I mean that's just exciting. That's how we're going to grow as a chain, and that's how we're going to grow as a community. Oh man, I think this question it's it's like to me it's like you're you know it's like goes I don't know I don't know it's like. From from an OD perspective, it's like what I'm what I'm always excited. Like I'm I'm always excited, and I've always been excited of the things we're doing. Um, I wear my Horizon Labs Horizon T-shirt with a lot of you know like pride in the sense that you know you don't get to to say that you work for a blockchain crypto project Web three company. We have our own main chain. We have our own cryptocurrency. Like we have a lot of exciting things. And certainly Eon is going to be, I think, kind of like this like huge door that is like, hey, you know, like we're here, we're doing a lot of exciting stuff and we've done a lot of exciting things. But this is just, you know, I wouldn't say the start. It's just a continuation of like a lot of things coming our way, right? Uh, certainly it's about e expansion and like exploring, as Spencer was mentioning, uh, uncharted territory in the sense that, hey, we're inviting folks, we're inviting you, developer, to come and, and build, you know, like in our platform, check it out, leave, leave, some, leave us some feedback and see what interesting use cases or D apps, um, uh, you know, come to life. So I think that's one of the things that I'm most excited about, just like this uh, 
expectation on on the new things that can be built, which it's it's a big question mark, right? Like we don't know the answer, but um, the 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 chance is there. The tools are there. Uh, the team is working really hard to provide uh, the best infrastructure and the tools um, at hand. So now it's going to be kind of like on 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 the community out there to to you know uh, continue building uh, things that are exciting. And uh, yeah, I look forward to see where we're going to be in a year from now. I very much agree with you on that. Uh, it does very much feel like the future is one big question mark followed by like three gigantic exclamation marks after that. So that is fantastic. And thank you all so, so much for joining us today. It's been great speaking with you about this and we look forward to having you on future episodes. Yeah, that was great. Thanks for putting this together. Um, Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Erica, for having us. And uh, yeah, we'll see each other uh, around. Yes. Thank you for joining us on Beyond the Horizon. Stay tuned for more exciting episodes as we continue to discover the limitless potential of the Horizon ecosystem. If you liked this episode, make sure to subscribe and leave a thumbs up. Thank you, and we'll see you again next time.